I was having these series of dreams, but the dream that I'll never ever forget was I dreamt that I was back at my old place in Minnesota and there was a storm coming and it was that the clouds were dark and it was eerie, it's starting to thunder and lightning and so I'm at the front door trying to get in but it's locked and I'm like scared because I know this storm is really going to be violent. So I ran to the side of my house and I, I remember just putting my back up against the wall and because there's a little roof hanging over thinking that that was going to protect me but the winds picked up and the thunder and the lightning and all of a sudden this rain it, it just took me up in this flood and I was drowning I was drowning in this flood and I'll, I'll never forget like suffocating in this dream in my sleep and I didn't know what to do except I knew to call out on Jesus in my dream and so I said Jesus 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 three times and on the third time I saw his face through the water and he pulled me out and so he took me to the front of my of the house he unlocked the door and he showed me windows that had been open and he said gently and in love he said these windows need to be shut it's it's going to do damage to to your house and he said the back door is um, open it needs to be shut I didn't know what it meant it wasn't long after that where things in my life became overwhelming and I was caught up in a violent, wicked storm. I went down a road that I never thought I would go down. Hey guys, welcome back to Lydia Isnanto channel. We are back in our human stories episode. We have another special guest here. She is a very beautiful and brave woman. Her name is Sean Shorin. She is currently as a lead female outreach. Yes. I grew up in an alcoholic home, so my dad and mom got together and um, they actually didn't marry until my twin sister and I were born. Not a very healthy uh, upbringing. My dad was drinking a lot and my mom carried most of the weight of raising us. But she became a Christian when I was, when my sister and I were about seven years old and I just remember that change. I remember seeing a peace come over her and she had quit smoking and drinking. She introduced um, the Lord to my sister and I and um, I remember, yes, I, I want that because I saw what it was doing to my mom and I really had this deep faith when I accepted the Lord and my family lived pretty close to the pastor and his family. My sister and I would go over there a lot to play with their kids. Unfortunately, the the pastor called me over to sit on his lap and he touched me inappropriately. And that happened on several occasions. And I just remember keeping the secret because I didn't know who to tell. I was just confused. And I really was searching for someone that I could look up to and I couldn't look up to my dad. He was not present in my life. Um, I remember feeling a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, feeling alone, confused and scared. It wasn't until I was 16 years old that we had a youth pastor come to our church. I decided that I was going to open up to him and I, and I let him know what happened. This youth pastor became angry. He got together with the elders, with my mom, my sister and I, the youth pastor and his wife. And so finally one of the elders decided to ask him, well, pastor, is this true? And the pastor said, yeah. It is. Within a week, um, the pastor and his family fled the state. The church didn't really know what was going on, so there were a lot of rumors. And I felt betrayed because the church was my, my family and um, there was a big split in the church. And I felt like, wow, I, I caused this. I told my mom, I said, I'm not going back to that church. And she understood. And I started to drink and go to parties and do the teenage thing, looking for acceptance. I was a promiscuous in my teens as well. I went from one relationship to the next relationship, never wanting to commit. So after two years of college in Minnesota, my sister and I decided to move to Arizona. We got involved in a church down there and we saw that, wow, you know, there's people who actually um, live out the Christian faith. I met my first husband. I jumped into this marriage at 22 and I wasn't healed on the inside. I remember for a lot of the marriage I was depressed. We moved to the mainland, we moved to California, to LA. My husband at the time started looking around for another job, for another um, pastoral or youth pastor type position. 
and we got a phone call from a pastor in San Francisco and we ended up moving to San Francisco. We worked at a church there. So in 1997 is when I had my daughter. A couple years later we tried to have another child and I found myself pregnant and at uh, five months pregnant I lost the baby. I wasn't able to get pregnant after that. So I remember feeling, again, I, I felt like I'm not worth anything. I can't even, you know, give my husband a baby. And all these lies kept coming into my head and I, I really went into a depression. And so at that point, I, I got on some antidepressants. It was Prozac. I became speedy. I became like almost manic a little bit. And at this time I was in graduate school and I would um, start drinking a little bit. In 2001, I started a homeless program at the church in San Francisco. I gathered up some leaders and we started a, a ministry. So I started actually opening up to some people on the street. And it didn't take long where um, I, I got a hold of some pills. And just feeling like, wow, this, this feels really, this feels really good. I, I can deal with life now. And I became addicted. I was starting to make poor decisions, and even in grad school, my grades were going down. So the elders were noticing um, changes in me, and my husband was noticing, and so they were concerned. So um, I didn't listen to their advice, and I started doing things my own way. And I ran out of my pills. And so it didn't take long where I, I got a hold of some heroin, and I put a little bit in my nose. I mean, I never, never, ever thought I would go down that road, ever. I lost my marriage. I lost my church. We had we had bought a Victorian house, my dream house in San Francisco. After the house was sold in San Francisco, it was just me alone with my husband, which soon to be ex-husband. And I remember him saying the words, I don't love you anymore, I'm leaving. And he took my daughter um, to Seattle. And she was about five at the time. And I, I was very isolated. For two years, um, I shot heroin and I had OD, almost died. I ended up in the hospital for a month um, with endocarditis, which is an infection in the heart. It's just, it's just horrible how drugs just is so deceiving. And I, I started doing crack. And so I met um, somebody that sold me a little bit of crack. And by this time my money was running out and I ended up staying with him in an RV and I found myself pregnant and I was still using as I'm pregnant, I'll just have an abortion. I mean, the baby's probably damaged. I, what am I doing? I don't believe in abortion. But I did go into um, a center for pregnant women. It was a Christian one. Um, and they gave me an ultrasound. And I saw the little baby moving and kicking. I'm like, wow, that's a real life. There's no way I can have an abortion. There's no way. I gotta get away from this man because this man is like keeps bringing me crack and he's abusive and so I checked myself into a hospital. Um, I did a program and I had the baby. He came out perfect. He came out, he's a miracle, really a miracle. And I named him Isaiah, which means God provides. We moved into um, a clean and sober living environment. Isaiah's dad was in jail and uh, he got out of jail and I started letting him see Isaiah. I wasn't still, I was still not very healthy. I was still growing and he was definitely unhealthy. And it didn't take long where I was back um, drinking a little bit and doing pills. So I, got, I ended up getting kicked out of the, the clean and sober living house and found myself in a motel with my baby. And so it then it just began to spiral down again where I was living from one place to the next with this child and trying to avoid Isaiah's dad because he's abusive. 2011 in, in October, in, in the week before I had called out to God, I said, God, please help me. I don't wanna live like this. This is not me. This is not me, God, help me. And a week later I was laying in my bed and I felt the most intense love that I had ever felt in my life. And he said to me, I allowed you to go through everything you needed to go through. Are you ready? Are you ready to surrender? And I immediately said, yes, I surrender, God. I surrender, Jesus. I surrender. I knew it was the Holy Spirit. And I just wept like I've never cried before. I was like, wow, God really was, has been with me throughout my whole life and even through my whole addiction. When Isaiah and I got onto that, on that plane 
from Seattle back to San Francisco, I remember feeling um, like every weight that was on me my entire life, every weight of depression, of um, guilt, shame, lifted off as that plane lifted off. I felt it. I felt uh, my eyes, my vision. I, I started seeing people in a different light. I started to feel love towards people, to feel compassion. And it was like, it was a spiritual experience. Um, and then I got into a program for six months. It was an outpatient. And at that time I lived with my sister and I began to really work on myself for the first time. I started seeing things in a totally different way and God started opening doors. He provided my son and I a place to live. Um, I started going to street church just to kind of check it out. I went with my sister. I remember seeing Dave, my, hus my husband now. I just remember observing him with the people on the street. So that's really cool what he does. And I remember just watching him and thinking, if I ever get married again, which I never thought I would, I want to marry someone like that because I could see his um, transparency with, with the people on the street and his love for people on the street. So two years into my recovery is when Dave and I connected and we started dating and I, I knew that God had put him in my life as a protector, as a father for Isaiah, as a, a wonderful husband who's very passionate and very um, protective. My story is really about redemption and now um, I love the fact that I get to um, use my story, my story of addiction, to help other women on the street. And just like that dream I had, Jesus pulled me out of that flood. Well, that flood represented addiction in my life. It, it was addiction, and those windows, um, I, I believe, represented the, the people, places, and things that I was involved in that were that were doing damage to me. And I believe that back door in my dream represented pride. God let me know that it was not over. And for anybody that's listening, it's not over. It's not over. God has a plan for your life. Thank you so much, Sean. It's really amazing. And for the audience out there, thank you so much for watching. And don't be afraid to reach out, find the right community, and find help if you need to. And stay tuned for the next Human Stories episode. Thank awesome. you.